What is up XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. BNY Mellon, take a listen to this clip. Benjamin Duva, I work for BNY Mellon, part of the digital assets business, look at tokenization. And uh, who doesn't know, BNY Mellon is the largest custodian in the world with 44 trillion of assets under custody and about 20% of investable assets touch BNY Mellon every day. So a great clip there from Mr. Man XRP. BNY Mellon is the largest custody of assets, custodian of assets in the world with 44 trillion worth of assets. And 20% of investable assets touch BNY Mellon every day. And who does Ripple have a case study and some practice with? BNY Mellon. Here's an article on the official Ripple blog. And the title is BNY Mellon, Reinventing Payments. Ripple is not working on XRP Hello, to deliver it to small people like you and me. It is for these big banks, these Bank of America's BNY Mellons, these JP Morgans. A great clip here from XRP and XLM founder Jed McCaleb talking about one worldwide ubiquitous payment. I also think that we're pretty far off still, um, but I think one interesting thing is that uh, it's pretty clear that it will happen. There, there will be some like worldwide, like ubiquitous uh, payment method, like some digital currency. It just makes so much sense, like given the way the internet works and given the, like how global the world is now, it doesn't doesn't make sense to have all these different currencies. It, it, they should all just be one common language, essentially, that people can interact with. There should be one common currency. Everything is digitizing. Everything is trending towards globalization. And it's only a matter of time before we have a currency. Now, will it be a dollar or not? This Chinese guy makes a really good case. And I've been saying, yeah, I think the dollar's on its way out. I've been talking about de-dollarization. But this guy makes some, some interesting points about China. And if you guys need a spot for digital assets or XRP, I recommend Uphold. It's sleek, it's simple, it's secure. It's where I buy my XRP and Flare every day. A link to Uphold in the video description below. And I'll take a listen to this very intelligent guy. Panic just because of a shit post by Putin. Like, when can you stop listening to that dumbass bunker bitch? You can mark my words. The Chinese yuan will never become an international currency, let alone the main one. Why? Because China doesn't want it to happen. Putin might want it to happen, but she doesn't. Here's why. Firstly, you should know that China's wealth is concentrated in a group of crazy, crazy rich people. They have wealth beyond your wildest dream. Okay, you might think their closets are filled with Hermes or, or, or Chanel. No, they're filled with cash from the floor to the fucking ceiling. Just like rich people elsewhere, uh, they are assholes with shady businesses. But what makes them different from the American rich assholes is that they don't want to stay in a country that made them rich. Weird, huh? Their entire life pursuit is to fucking run, or at least help their kids run. Folks in China even use the English word run to specifically refer to the action of leaving the country. So the rich people want to leave, but the only thing that holds them back is the fact that their wealth is yuan denominated. You know what I mean? They can't spend their money elsewhere. China doesn't let them sell their yuan beyond a certain quota. So rich people can only spend a tiny share of their wealth outside China. Now imagine what will happen if yuan becomes an international currency that's freely exchangeable. These mega rich people will be out of their birdcage. They'll swarm into luxury properties outside China like zombies chasing meat. And back home, the yuan denominated assets will just collapse. The currency, the stocks, the real estate will all turn into worthless shit in a matter of weeks. You think the CCP will let So great points. China and the US, the rich elite, have a different type of culture. The Chinese don't like to flaunt their money. Yes, there's always exceptions to the rule, but the exception doesn't make the rule. And then if China did make the yuan, the world reserve currency, or the geopolitical situation made that happen, that's not good for China because that devalues all their assets. Right now, the yuan is the only way to buy these Chinese assets. If it's exchanged worldwide and it's the global reserve currency, that's not beneficial to China. Never really thought about it from that perspective. Now, this guy is the co-creator of Ripple's interledger, Evan Schwartz, talking about bank interest. Take a listen. So I get how this works when you have, let's say, Bitcoin and Ethereum or, or two ledgers where you can you know, escrow money and you have smart contracts and all that stuff. But how would that work if you have something like a bank? Because, I mean, even if you have the receipt, for example, that you've given out the money, 
as you know connect let's say on the bitcoin network you know how can i use that to claim something from a connector from a bank yeah so how does this work with banks um uh banks are banks are very interested in adop in adopting this basically ripple's been working with banks for um two years now and uh part of where this where this the idea for this came out of was banks were very interested in ripple's technology but said um you know, if we're interested in this, we want to see how this scales. Like, can we push millions of transactions uh, through this per second? Um, and then they were also concerned about privacy on a public ledger. Um, and so uh, as soon as we came out, so they had come to us with those concerns as we were as we were going to them and they were like, yeah, we're very interested in adopting your technology, but we have these two concerns. And then we came out with Interledger and they were like, yes, concerns, Solved, um, and so uh, now the now Ripple is basically uh, hard at work um, while I'm here talking to you um, uh, in implementing this in in our product suite that we deploy at banks with the idea that uh, banks are very interested in Ripple's technology but want to know if it can scale up to millions of transactions per second. Here we are today, and hundreds of banks have already partnered with who? Ripple. What are they using? XRP. A great clip here from Fox News. Crypto Law US tweeted this out. The law organization focused on crypto. The markets and dissenters inside the SEC Gov are waking up to how Gary Gensler and Senator Warren are now the best friends the big banks ever had. Talking about a good hypothesis for why all of these lawsuits and attacks on crypto could be happening. Oh, the notion that so many people want to see this succeed, again, whether you're an investor or not, I think speaks to the idea of freedom, of innovation, of self-determination. And there are a lot of powerful forces out there that don't want to see that happen. Absolutely. And what I think what's happening is that cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin is one of the few times in history where the individual kind of front run the, the industry, if you right. will, in the hedge funds. And personally, I think that Gensler's attack on crypto is to allow the hedge funds and the Wall Streeters to come in, crash the market. They come in and the attack on crypto is to hurt it so that the Wall Streeters can come into the industry and get a good market position. Been talking about this kind of hypothesis for a while, and it makes sense if you think about Gary Gensler. His net worth is over a hundred million dollars. He's worked on Wall Street before. He has these connections, so it would make sense. I haven't even looked into his political funders, but that would probably tell a little bit more about that situation. Um, XRP's price had a little bit of a pullback, but that's because Bitcoin did as well. So it's nothing really to be worried about. Bitcoin isn't looking too hot though. So until this lawsuit ends, it'll probably be interesting price action on XRP. And when do you guys think the lawsuit will be over? Take a listen to this clip. This is, I think, digital asset buyer, digital asset investor. I wish this guy would have credited him on Twitter, but, um, when does the lawsuit end? We're literally, I mean, it could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen in the next 10 minutes. We've got a summary judgment or a settlement announcement or combination of both over the course of days is imminent. It can happen any minute, any day, any time, and most likely happens by the end of this month. Um, in my opinion, he, this guy's right on this. XRP will be the first crypto in the United States to have clarity. Ripple, Brad, Kit, Chris has fought uh, hard, not just for XRP, but the entire crypto industry. True. Our victory is near. I can only hope um, that it, uh, I, I, I keep saying that if the judge follows the law, she cannot say XRP itself security. So the lawsuit is eminent. We know this. Guys, if you made it to the end of the video, thanks for giving me nine minutes of your day comment clarity in the comment section below i appreciate everyone that watches the full video and i hope you got some enjoyment or entertainment or education out of it um, as always guys take care of yourselves take care of your families until next time